common denominator. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. I'm not here to waste your time. Everyone has access to the information. We just know how to analyze it better. Where else are you going to have this much fun? You the man. You the man. Todd Father. Show me the money. This is what I've been doing. Had to trip on my bag. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Yeah. Had to trip on my bag. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman. I'm Todd Butterfield. Usually we go live at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. We told you we were going to go early because today is my birthday and I'm supposed to go out to dinner with the family. But I wanted to make sure that we still went live with you guys because cryptocurrencies never sleep and we are here for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies from fundamentals to technical analysis. So hopefully we can help you out. Obviously we're seeing a little bit of red in the market today. Bitcoin couldn't quite hold it with the FUD about BitHum being hacked for $30 million. And the reason I call that FUD is because it got hacked for $30 million. So a very small portion of the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem caused a multi-billion dollar sell-off. And on top of that, in their initial report, BitHum did say that they would refund any lost funds from their clients, meaning that investors really lost nothing. Essentially what it was is there's some kind of storage error on their side So people were weren't losing cryptocurrencies from their individual accounts But the actual exchange was losing it from their hardware wallets So everybody's account should be fine and it's really just coming out of their own revenue pockets Which they're going to gather back from all the transaction fees from you guys trading over there So really not a big deal in the big scheme of things. They made an announcement and Immediately and said it would be refunded. So I don't know why we had a multi-billion dollar sell-off we did see a little bit of a bounce, but the market is starting to look a little heavy now. Now, we do have some winners in the market, and is the USD Tether conspiracy finally over? Hope so. We'll discuss it. We have held strong since day one on this channel that we use USD Tether to buy and sell cryptocurrencies to hedge against the markets and redeploy on the dips. Also, that we have found no risk associated with it as well. Now, apparently, there's yet another report saying that they do hold all the U.S. dollars in two bank accounts. Therefore, the whole theory of manipulation is right out the window. Right out the window. And everybody with it. <laughs> there we go. Well, we're going to jump right into this. This one is going to be nice, short, and sweet. Thank you, everybody, for your birthday wishes. That is awesome. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. You're like the second family to me. But we're going to nail out some information, nail out some charts, hopefully answer some questions for you, and we will be calling it a day. Also, yesterday I was talking about how Zen might do a sponsorship for us to give you guys Zen. Starting July 1st, 10 live shows per month. We'll have a one Zen Cash giveaway currently valued at $20. So a minimum of $20 probably because this is about as low as it's going to get to give back to you guys. Once again, this is not a paid advertising slot. We don't have to talk about Zen. We don't have to do anything. Simply, they want to provide a giveaway to you guys, and we are giving all of the coins they're giving us right back to you. And it's just given that we like the coin here a little bit. We own some, and we like the way it looks. So here we go. Bitcoin almost even for the day at 6750 yeah, All these prices are right about what they were when we went live yesterday. We are down about a billion and a half off the market cap, so nothing too crazy. Um, everything is red except for, let's see... Boom, Ethereum Classic, another 6.16% up to $16.42. Ever since that Coinbase announcement, we have been preaching that that is a no-brainer to us. We would be mining it, accumulating it, buying it, whatever means necessary. I think when it goes to Coinbase, it is going to have massive gains. And I think with it being part of Grayscale, uh, IOHK Partnership, and the list goes on and on. It's also available on the new Circle app we were talking about. They only trade seven currencies, and Ethereum Classic is one of them. I think it's still 
At this price for the long term, I think you're still good, but I don't know if I'll chase up here. Maybe it will give back some of these gains if these markets continue to move a little red throughout the rest of this night. We will see here. Biggest winners for the day, IOST up 13.61%. Enigma up 13.39%. That is in the title. Enigma has announced a partnership with Intel. We will talk a little bit about that here in a second. And then we got MOAC, I'm not sure what that is, Ethereum Classic, and Basic Attention Token showing its strength once again. Now, I hate to show this, but with all the red on the market, you almost got to. Linda up another 8.21%. I said there's probably going to be some resistance around 50. It is at 52 Satoshis. I've officially sold three-fourths of my position at Linda in between 50 to 53. I believe it hit up to 53, and that sell order did hit when we were going live so we'll see i'm anticipating some kind of pullback if not i'll be happy with the gains but it would be unfortunate because i do think linda does have a nice strong long term and you're naming your first kid linda now i will have to i mean it's been treating us well ever since that interview guys <laughs> this wallet is really a, like a first in kind in the cryptocurrency sector and we'll see what they can do here with linda x now nothing is guaranteed of course but i'm hoping to see some sort of pullback there so i can get some coins in order to create a master node or some staking. ETC creeping. It's creeping. Just we keeps like on creeping. We like that. We like that. Yeah. We've been talking about that one almost since day one that we like that one. All the way before that CLO airdrop, etc. But we'll throw it over to Todd. Let him look at some crypto charts. I think he has a little bit of uh, traditional charts with his uh, charting software he wants to show you guys as well. So that should be interesting. Right now we're going to start just with a normal Bitcoin. Uh, we talked about this being a one-two. Last night's sell-off with the hack probably is another one, too. You could say that we could stop here, come back to uh, 6,500 one more time for this to be a one, two, and then we need to get off to the races. So uh, it'd be really best if we just go right here tonight. And the, and the, you know, the recovery from the uh, sell-off last night, I think so far has been good. So I'd leave, the, leave it open that we could rally from right here. So... Let's just go through a quick few of these. Not much really to, much else to say. Dash, 264. Still having troubles there at resistance. Classic up to 6%. So uh, that one much better. We'd expect still a lot more out of that. Ethereum had a nice run last night to, uh, what was it, 540 and change. Well... We're going to click. For some reason, that one didn't come up. Here's Litecoin. Nothing in Litecoin. We need to get above that 102, 103 level to get that thing going. A lot of these charts are going to look that way. Neo, 39. 41, 42 is resistance. Ripple, 54. Needs to get above the 56, 57. So uh, some of these other charts leave a lot to... Uh, I got a lot of work ahead of them still. OMG down to 902. Not impressed with the last few days there at all. Uh, and what else we got here? I mean, Decred 92. Same type of thing. Not doing much. EOS 1043. I think exactly where it was last night. I mean, and Neo really hasn't done much and been pretty weak. Um, but... You know, I think that's still a decent one to hold. But that hasn't done much either. Here's made. Trying to ride a little bit out of the hole. Looking a little bit better short term. But still a lot of work to do. ONT. BTC. Not doing too bad. Chart looks pretty good if you uh, zoom out a little bit. I saw Ubik up a little bit. Not much there. Zen 1964. Nothing there. Look at that real quick. I would expect that to dig in somewhere here. ZRX, 87 and a half. And for a lot of these people who, these projects that we like, like Zen, ZRX, Neo, and some others that, you know, after it had a massive run, you're like, man, did I miss it? Should I buy now? And we're like, kind of, hey, wait for a pullback, see what happens, see how it plays out. Now is your opportunity to either lower your cost basis, dollar cost average into these projects, or finally get the opportunity to pull the trigger. The ones that we've talked about that we like fundamentally, their fundamentals are only getting stronger. When the next bull run happens, we still love the projects. 
So you might want to take this opportunity to add to the bags or create that bag that you thought you missed out, missed out on on the first run. I know a lot of people were saying that about Zero X. Uh, a lot of people were talking about that with Zen, Neo, when Neo went to like 190. So here's the opportunity, you know? So whether you want to take advantage of it or not, that is up to you. What up, Joshua Ramsey? One thing I did want to show, because the software, you know, Vladimir's still supposed to give me the 89 exchanges. I just want to show a couple things here because I've had some success trading lumber liquidators. This goes back to uh, April uh, 2017. You can see here by Wyckoff, we had a selling climax. We had the usual accumulation phase. We had a sign of strength, last point of support. Then we had a jump across the creek. Then we had a backup that came on uh, bad news and a little bit of volume. I did give a buy there for pro traders. If you ran uh, point and figure charts from here over to here, and also from uh, this test over, it gave you upside objectives of anywhere from uh, 35 and change to like 41. We had to run up here uh, to that objective area. This was the biggest down day on the biggest red volume, except clear back to uh, our day that we bought. I did liquidate on that day, and I wanted to show you. We, we, then we put a downtrend in. I did not catch the downtrend. If I'd have been a little smarter, I would have caught this last point of supply. I wasn't looking for that at that moment because I wasn't bearish on the markets then. We did put a downtrend in, and then just the other day, June 5th, let's try to zero in on the 6th. Because now we've got another Wyckoff accumulation. This here was a selling climax with a big volume, as you can see, an automatic rally, secondary test. This would have been a shakeout or a number one spring. You can see it didn't bring in, it brought in some selling. But also I want to show you, this is a huge down red bar and, and big price decline, 24 down to uh, 20. But this is a five minute OP down here and you can see that it didn't, it went down, uh, actually was up net on that day which means more volume came in on five minute up bars than down bars, which you would find that a little bit incredible to think that net net for the day on that day, volume was actual positive. To me, that would say somebody was accumulating that and buying it on the sell. And then you had to rally back into the trading range. You then tested it on these three days of low volume. That probably told you you was getting ready to go. I didn't buy it there because normally you don't want to buy until a downtrend has been broken. So I didn't give a buy till June 5th at the close of this day. And I said, look for a decent rally and maybe another chance to, to buy it. We did get a low technometer reading four days ago. I did not add on there. Uh, and then today we had a, a pretty big day on good volume. So hopefully this is a jump across the creek coming. I just wanted to show that because, uh, you know, those, that, that stock is showing just some pretty good Wyckoff principles at work. And the first trade was almost a double. And uh, I don't think I have it here. I posted on my pro traders today, but there's upside objectives first to like 29 here, which is uh, here on over to here. And if you go from uh, here clear over to here, the upside objectives I think is uh, 41. So I would guess this stock probably is making a move to 41. And then there's way bigger, higher objectives than that. So there's been a lot of negative news on lumber liquidators. Usually it's good to trade those stocks and coins are in the news. So there you go. A little traditional I think, side I think that's for the you. One. And maybe when we come back here, if we got time, I'm going to talk about TLT because I had a trade on that at the end of the day today. Perfect. Yeah, so there's a little news. I know you guys do have money in traditional markets as well. Maybe we can help you help in those stock picks as well. But really, that was also demonstrating the software that we have on the traditional side. We were trying to replicate that software on the crypto side. And if you, I try to get Todd to slow down to really teach you guys about some of these indicators and such that he's looking at. But if you want to understand those indicators better, make sure to go to learncrypto.io and we actually have our cryptocurrency trading course. We have about 940 current students. So if you want some help learning Wyckoff, how to mark up your own charts and be a better trader and investor in these crypto markets, and you can use that knowledge for traditional markets, make sure to go over to the website and check that out. Because I think the big thing on that chart showing that big red down day was huge volume, 
huge sell-off, but net net during the day, that volume was net positive. So those are things that I think we got to have in the cryptos. Mm -hmm. And God, you know, no one wants to hear my crap about software coming, but you know, we've worked every day. We've had issues uh, trying to make it happen. Obviously I want that more than anybody. So I'm trying to get it done. So that way we can see the big volume and make hopefully some intelligent decisions Throw in some stops, et cetera. That, the trade I had in uh, lumber, I bought it at 2235. I think my stop's 1995. So when I trade those things, I've always got stops because it's easier to figure out a stop level. And, but again, I'm looking for you know, a 50% rally or something. So on these, I've mentioned on these coins, if you're looking for what I think is huge upside, it's just tough to use stops unless you're going to try to trade them short term. Yep. And really the issue that we've been running into with the software, traditional side works well, but on the, the crypto side, why we haven't released it, we've got it halfway working, but we're obviously not going to charge people for something that's not working properly or we're going to be able to utilize for the best trades possible. But really the issues are the APIs and the data gathering from some of these crypto exchanges just isn't quite up to par. And they've been fixing it and we're working around it, trying to get things to aggregate properly, but that's really the biggest issue. If one of the 89 exchanges doesn't report for a five-minute period, then it starts you know, throwing some curveballs and, and and then again, yeah, it needs to work correctly, obviously to charge for it, but it should, it needs to make some money. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta provide some value by uh, giving us those trades that are working. And then we just gotta be right like 60, 70% of the time. I mean, you don't have to be right hundred percent of the time. Cool. Cool. Let's go ahead and do- first of all, Crypnonics, I know you're a hater and, and also you're full of it. So it's not been two years. I just showed you software. I've showed the crypto software working. So, but I've changed to more exchanges. So if you want to pay for the, uh, the 38 exchanges or whatever it was, go ahead and do that. But I'm trying to make money here and not sell products. So here we go. The tether debate might finally be over. I know all the conspiracy theories out there. I know you guys might like it, might not like it. I've been using it since day one that it's been in existence, never had an issue. Finally, we have another report saying that tether does actually have and back all of their uh, USD tether with the appropriate amount of USD. Tether LTD, issuer of digital currency, said its bank deposits of $2.55 billion were confirmed by the law firm co-founded by FBI Director Louis Free as the company seeks to reassure investors that its cryptocurrency is backed by U.S. dollars. Tether has been dogged by speculation that the money isn't actually there, a concern that persisted among skeptics even after an accounting firm Friedman LLP did an analysis last year of Tether's finances similar to this new review. The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission also subpoenaed Tether back in December of 2017 to investigate the situation. Nothing came of that. FSS picked June 1st as the day to analyze without Tether's knowledge. The law firm said in its report released Wednesday, it was given online access to Tether's bank accounts, statements, and to employees at the financial institutions. Tether serves as a kind of glue holding together much of the cryptocurrency market around the world. Most banks, fearing money laundering and other shenanigans, have steered clear of the business, meaning Tether provides a stable value in place of the dollar wherever bank accounts are difficult or impossible to get here in the cryptocurrency community. Friedman LLP, the accounting firm previously retained by Tether, included similar disclaimers in its own report in September on the crypto company's finances. Friedman was also subpoenaed by the CFTC as part of its Tether's investigation, according to a person familiar with the matter. Now, you can find this on Bloomberg and a couple other ones if you want to read through it. Also, FSS, the attorney-client communi- wrote up an attorney-client communication work product. This is obviously going to be a little drier but more professional, you can see here how much their bank accounts are holding. So 2.545 billion, et cetera. So if you wanna do more research, you can, but this is good to see maybe some of the skeptics will just start using right. Tether and start buying Bitcoin. Let me go back to cryptonomics because if, uh, I understand what you're saying, but the software works on the stock side and really it was almost somewhat copy and paste for the cryptos. The problem is coming from bringing in 89 exchanges and 89 different APIs, et cetera. And then 
making it work on going to five minute data. So I don't think any other, uh, you know, it's been built on the stock side by the same people. So obviously I just went right back to them. And uh, if you haven't been hating on me on some other channels, then I'll apologize, Cryptonomics, but uh, the name just uh, didn't ring well with me. All so. right. And uh, Swartz Abaka says, says a law firm on retainer by Tether. That is true. But there's also Friedman. They also, and, and you're still legally liable, even if you're the attorney by Tether. And also the CFTC did uh, try, to re try to do their own investigation, came up with nothing. On top of that, it would be kind of silly for Bitfinex to not hold it because the amount of revenue that USD Tether provides to them. So if you want to trade leverage or margin trading over at Bitfinex, you use it via USD Tether, of which they make a lot of money on. Also, all USD Tether trading pairs on their exchange, they make all that money on. So to not be trying to be regulatory compliant and hold those billions of dollars will probably cost you in the long run and cost you your crypto exchange. <laughs> so we'll see. Hey, everybody has their own opinion. I still see no problem with Tether and these reports just kind of reaffirm what we have been saying since day one. But now we were talking about Pundi X, how it did win the vote for Binance. It completely dumped after it won the vote. And I was like, could be listed tomorrow, could be listed three months from now. Well, it's listed tomorrow. So will this thing bounce? I know it already had a pretty decent bounce. How much higher could it realistically go? It is available for trading starting June 21st. I know there are some holders. Now, what happens with Binance listings? Usually there's a pump followed by almost a 100% retracement. At least, this, you know, 50% retracement is almost guaranteed. So you do what you want. I do not own any Pundi X. But man, that was a quick turnaround at one. And the very next day, they're already set a listing date. And let's see what that thing's been doing on the price here real quick for you guys. Yep, there you go. So up 12% for the day. It had a massive dump. Massive dump from, four, from 0 0.15 cents down to 0 0.009. And now it is back up to, to one penny. So we'll see. I don't know. I know there's a couple holders. Off. Yep. So that's up to you. But the problem was everybody knew they were going to win. They were winning the vote by so much. That's where you saw this massive run here because they were they had like 38% of the vote and there was like 10 coins in there. So everybody was getting hyped into this that they were going to win. Now it looks like you've had this correction here. Nice corrective pattern. And they'll probably have a pump once it goes live tomorrow. Let me have the screen again. I want to answer uh, Stephen Evans. Access, I mean, understand pro traders is stock and ETF ideas from WyckoffSMI.com. So if you go to the store at WyckoffSMI.com, Pro Traders membership, uh, you know, so we're gonna email you ideas, $49.99 a month. If anybody from this channel wants in there, hit me up beforehand. I'll probably throw you a discount. And, uh, you know, again, mostly US stocks, US ETFs, and then, uh, I'm going to go over uh, TLT here in a minute to talk about that. And uh, I guess my little passion is I'm getting, you know, I, I keep saying and everyone's probably somewhat aware of it. I mean, yesterday I had a Wyckoff gentleman who goes in hard on Wyckoff and I appreciate what he's doing and uh, he has spent hours and hours on it. And I just made a simple comment that he had a marking wrong on his charts. Next thing I know, he's finding out where I live and uh, saying all kinds of personal stuff. So I guess I'm getting a little bit tired of Twitter and YouTube and, and some of these things. So I'm trying to deal with it all, but I'm pretty busy and uh, it sometimes it just gets tiring. Yeah, the pro traders is only for stocks right now. And like I keep saying that the stock software works. Uh, the cryptos, I mean, they're saying any day now they'll have 89 exchanges up, so. I can't tell you if that's gonna change. I don't know if we'll ever do a pro traders for cryptos. More importantly, we're gonna to try to just build this channel. I'm gonna probably give a lot of trades right here. I'm gonna be trading a lot more active for, for uh, PCG. Uh, I'm gonna be going live a lot more with the software. So I've been looking forward to that more than anybody. So, uh, you know, I want that more than anybody else, so. There we go. Just trying to get there. Let me steal this screen real quick because Bjorn is asking about Neo right now, and that kind of comes in play with this article right here. Because what is the biggest 
protocol and probably the biggest cryptocurrency in general that is based out of China. That is NEO and gas, of course, the dividend. Why China will drive the next crypto bull run. News out of China usually has a negative impact on cryptocurrency markets. The government has made its stance on cryptos very clear. It doesn't like them and will not tolerate them. Sounds like them talking about Facebook. They just made their own application. YouTube, they made their own application. They just want the power. That's what it is, guys. And I think that is no different here in cryptocurrencies. And that's kind of what this article really talks about. The products that work with to become regulatory compliant with the Chinese government. So they kind of feel like they have a little bit of power over the cryptocurrency. Those are the ones that will explode. Now, does that kind of defeat the purpose of decentralization and the, you know, uh, lack of government involved with cryptocurrencies? Yeah, it does. But if you're in China or some of these parts of Asia and the Chinese government's like, hey, we don't like all these other cryptos, but we love NEO and that's what you can buy, that's probably what you're going to buy and use. China's crypto analysts believe the growing global financial instability and the possibility of U.S. incited trade wars in the region could be the catalyst for greater crypto investment. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are a natural alternative to government-regulated stocks and bonds since they are decentralized. Quote, the base of Bitcoin has changed. In fact, it has evolved to a wider base of investors. People who have only invested in equities are now looking for options as the rumblings in the stock and bond market increase. This new investor helps to establish a stronger Bitcoin market and adds legitimacy to the cryptocurrencies as a whole. Weren't you saying earlier today that you were kind of short on bonds? Uh, I gave a sell today. That's what there I'm going to go, go over so next. That, Todd's analysis is in sight with uh, this, this uh, Chinese individual over here as well. Currently, markets are down from their highs at the beginning of the year. However, this cycle has been rinsed and repeated since Bitcoin's inception almost a decade ago. If the Chinese crypto gurus are to believe the next cycle is about to begin and that Asia will be leading the charge. We know that before China really clamped down on cryptocurrencies, the Chinese e uh, ecosystem for cryptocurrencies was among the top. Obviously, a lot of those Chinese investors still get into it using VPNs and other ways around the loophole. But um, if China loosens up the regulation, even if it's only for a finite amount of cryptocurrencies, say maybe Bitcoin, NEO, and some others, big money will move into those. And we've also seen the bullish sentiment from South Korea that we talked about, how they are actually creating a cryptocurrency incubator city within South Korea. And we know how much the South Koreans love their cryptocurrency and the premium they're willing to pay for it. Do you want to take a look at yep. that chart? I'm ready. This is actually a trade I just put out today, so people are paying for this advice, but I'm gonna give it away here for free, and we'll see if I'm right or not. This is TLT, which is the 20-year Treasury bond ETF. So I sold it short. I think bond prices are headed down, interest rates are headed up. And the reason for that really is marked by the blue arrows. Again, the uh, down here at the bottom is the five-minute OP, kept during the day and then uh, charted at the end of the day. So what this is shown on the blue arrow is volume has continued to come into this market to the upside for the last, what, 12 trading days or so, 15 days or so. And you can see price couldn't get back to the highs and then rejected it pretty hard today, kind of left behind maybe a up thrust, which could be, I think, maybe a downtrend starting. Uh, the forest index is a little more of an investor sentiment a little longer term, you can see it's possibly rolling over. The technometer is at 46, which is 50 is overbought, 44 neutral. So it's, you know, leaning more towards neutral to overbought. If it was at 50 or above, I'd feel a lot better getting short here. But uh, I'm not going to worry about it. We're not oversold. So really, I sold short late today, probably putting a stop just at this high. So... So this is just, you know, someone asked, are we doing short-term or long-term trades? Uh, you know, I'm putting on trades probably more with short-term thoughts, but I can show you a current trade I've got on is, uh, we've talked about this before too, Wingstop. Let me see if this thing loads. Uh... That's a one year, same type of thing. 
I'm not going to bring it up. It's going to take a little longer to load three years. But this was a backup to the creek that I bought on the Green Arrow. So I bought that at uh, 30 and change. And I still own it. But I've got a stop up here now, 47. I think it's 47.23 or something. So, uh, you know, it came down and took out the uptrend line a little bit. Went back through the high, so when it goes to a new high here, I decided that probably this high sh or this low here should hold. So that's where I got to stop. Did not act well today, but I still will give it room. So again, that was more of a uh, backup to the creek that had much higher upside objectives. So uh, this stop might be a little bit close for longer term, but I'll probably take the stop out there and then just try to buy it back again. You know. If this is distribution, that could be, uh, you know, a $10 down move, maybe to 42, 44. And then I'll see what the technometer looks like. But, uh, you know, this back here, uh, that was an easy buy with the technometer and the OP. Because you can see back here, again, I, this isn't the whole chart for accumulation. But you can see the OP got really weak here, went to a new low. Wow, the stock jumped the creek and backed up to it. I mean, that's, those are things you're really looking for because that showed that selling volume is coming in, but price in the meantime jumped a creek and backed up to it. And then it came down to a 30, uh, 32 or 33 on the technometer when 36 is a buy. So buying there was a no-brainer. And then just, I forget where I had my stop, but it probably was back here... Uh, you know, it's probably about a $3 stop. Then I've just raised the stop with me. So again, those are trades I'm hoping come to me on the cryptos. So, and they should, but we shall see. Sweet. But you got to have consolidated volume. I mean, accurate consolidated volume. These charts all have obviously volume from the New York or the over the counter. So it's easy to get that feed and it comes from bar charts with no issues. Bar chart is still having problems they told me they were selling me a crypto API when really they were selling me a crypto API inside a stock wrapper. Yeah. That's kind of what happened. So they're telling me like at the end of this month, they're going to have a really a crypto API. But I left that because I don't think they have enough exchanges. So if I can have 29 APIs or 89 APIs or whatever, I'm, I'm going to 89. So. And then I'm hoping to bring in volume from Bitcoin, USD, Bitcoin, Japanese yen, et cetera. So some of these things will show up and we can trade off of them. Perfect. Jack says, any ideas on why LTC has shown a little weakness recently? Maybe Coinbase plans to list other coins has weakened it somewhat. Well, first of all, Litecoin has one of the highest correlations with Bitcoin out of any other cryptocurrency in the space. So with Bitcoin being weak, Litecoin is also going to be weak. Litecoin has shown more weakness than Bitcoin. I think that is because ever since their light pay debacle, if you don't know about the light pay debacle, obviously this was supposed to be another premier integration with Litecoin into a peer-to-peer -peer transactional method, like almost like a point of sale that other merchants, uh, businesses could implement into their websites and in their door-to-door -door sales. That fell through, it didn't work out. All the money Litecoin Foundation donated to this developer, poof, scam, gone nothing so i think that hurt their image and they really haven't been making any moves lately no code updates that you're hearing about not adding other layers to their blockchain not getting integrated in new merchants payment solutions etc the one thing litecoin has for it it has the name brand it is available on almost every exchange it has the coinbase and it's uh, going to be part of all these indexes the coinbase index uh these etfs when they come into play will have litecoin i'm sure all these other elite products where they only sell the top five, top 10 cryptocurrencies, Litecoin always finds its way on there. So I believe institutional money doesn't care about fundamentals of cryptocurrencies. They're investing in the lump of these indexes. And if Litecoin falls in that index, it will see some price action. But like I said, Litecoin's been disappointing. It's one of the, you know, it was one of the, you know, best risk to reward cryptos out there. And I think it's definitely still can be once the custodian gets uh, produced and new money, institutional money comes into play. But, you know, Charlie, not to say Charlie isn't working, but they haven't made any new implementations. You haven't heard them getting integrated into new things. All you've heard is in September, they are going to have the first ever Litecoin Foundation 
conference or something. So that could be good because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of businesses and institutions there. But uh, you know, it's meant to be the silver to Bitcoin's gold. It's meant to be a transactional currency. And lately, you haven't been hearing them being integrated into new payment channels. So that's hurting them. So I don't know if they're just waiting for the bull run and to start announcing a bunch of stuff and get back on top of it or what. And I think they're just, they've worn everybody out in the chart. But I don't think the chart looks that bad longer term. So I would think it's going to come alive here. Myself. Whether it's here or whether it's, you know, from slightly lower levels again. But I think it's probably all right longer term down here. Yep. We just washed everybody out like we have on most of these things. You're just, I'm not expecting any kind of quick price actions out of Litecoin, that's for sure. Just right. We need to see this next level of infrastructure be created, and that's where the money is going to flow into those. You know, It's going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ethereum Classic, uh, Zcash, and Zen are the ones that are going to have traditional investors available to them. All right, I got a couple more things, and I got to get out of here. I'm already probably going to be late for my dinner, but you guys asked the questions. We got to try to answer them for you. So I'm not going to read this whole article, but Coinbase custody will attract over $20 billion from institutional investors, this person believes, according to their research. Fresh from opening a new office in Japan, acquiring the Ethereum-based exchange Paradex, which is actually built on 0x. So although it is technically Ethereum-based, it is on the 0x protocol. In an ongoing expansive drive, Coinbase is set to launch a new regulated crypto custody service that experts... experts say will open up to crypto finance space to game-changing investment from institutional investors and funds. We've been saying this since day one. They need a custodian. They don't want to be liable for holding these cryptocurrencies for their clients. They want Coinbase to be liable and hold them in cold storage. Essentially, they're expecting there is 250 hedge funds which currently invest in cryptocurrencies. There's a lot more with a lot bigger money that are looking to get in as well. They believe these hedge funds will probably look to go to safer methods like Coinbase Custody and some of these other ones so then they are not liable for holding all these clients' money as they continue to expand. And they're estimating that that will be around $20 billion, which represents a boost worth about 7% of the total market cap of the crypto market. Coinbase reportedly will charge a fiat setup fee of $100,000 along with a monthly charge of 10 basis points and a minimum balance of $10 million. Those are some big, pretty big numbers. And if you're paying 100,000 startup fee and 10 basis points every month, you're gonna be holding a lot more than $10 million in there as much as you possibly can to try to get rid of some of the, uh, the downward pressure from those fees that you have to, have to pay to get, even get started. So that is very interesting. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, bring up, I am not an Enigma holder, but Enigma has announced collaboration with Intel. As you already know, the Enigma team has been very hard at work on developing our protocol and secret contracts. Our aim is to create the first platform for scalable, end-to-end -end decentralized application, and that is no easy task. Today, we announced that Enigma is partnering with Intel on the research and development efforts to advance development of privacy-preserving computational technologies. Enigma essentially will be utilizing the Intel SGX, or the Software Guard Extensions, and building our groundbreaking privacy technologies. Pretty interesting. You're seeing another traditional company coming into the fold of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Now, Intel is not going to be using Enigma for anything or accepting it for anything, but essentially it is just kind of a research collaboration, kind of when we see IOHK support, Ethereum Classic, Zen, and Storm, this is kind of the same thing Intel is doing here with Enigma. That is why Enigma has seen some nice gains today. So congratulations to all the holders of that project. And I tweeted earlier today about uh, Coinbase's Adam White. Got a little, he was on a uh, podcast. I think if you're bored, that's decent. I think it's like 20 minutes. Kind of just long-term thinking how these markets are, you know, the cryptos are good and uh, institutional money coming, et cetera. So I enjoyed that little podcast if you get bored. Yeah, I yeah, tweeted yeah. about it uh, a few hours ago. I think the biggest takeaways from today are this. I find no issue with Tether. I mean, some people still say that's not enough information to be validated, but I'm, I'm still utilizing Tether. Tether. I use it as a hedge against the crypto market when I think a product or the market in, as a whole is overbought and I use it to buy, buy the effing dip, 
when I think it is oversold. Though I think that is the purpose of a pegged asset in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And why do I use USD Tether rather than USD? Because I don't want to create a taxable event. And as of now, that is kind of a little bit of a gray area. And Ruby Lively said that she's late, but here, and I think, I know she was wanting some Zen from the giveaways. And we're starting the Zen giveaway. July 1. July 1. We're doing like a one every other day or something. Yep. So this is what we're doing. Yeah, we're going to be giving away Zen, one Zen per live stream for 10 live streams a month. I think we do 16 total live streams. So hopefully we'll have some of our own personal giveaways for those days. But uh, guaranteed to have 10 Zen per month to give away back to you guys. So that's pretty awesome. I'm excited for that as well. I'd love to give you guys some free coins for supporting us and keep stacking those bags. And also it kind of promotes you to look into different products. Rocket366 says, buy the dump. There you go. Jeff Wee says, ETC been good to me. Can't wait for it to be on Coinbase. I'm accumulating and mining ETC. I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, I'm hoping for a little bit of a pullback here if we if we can uh, march a little higher up. But I think it's a great opportunity and a great cryptocurrency. I think it's a no-brainer. To get the Zen giveaway, you got to comment on the videos we tell you to. Yep. So whenever we say, whenever we have it in the title, it will say Zen giveaway. Whenever you do a video uh, giveaway, it's usually in the title. And on those videos, you watch it, smash that like button, make sure you're subs subscribed to the channel. And then in the comment section, you will leave your wallet address and we will pick those, the winners live on the show. So everybody can see it's completely random, no shenanigans. And then there we go. An ETC is at a pump or dump when it hits Coinbase. I'm sure it'll be a quick pump, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I'll dump it myself. I'm, well, trying, I'm trying to hold some of these things. I, I just think there's, there's big gains coming, I think. And then Lloyd says, thanks for the Zen and Lindo recommendations, Nick. No problem. She, you are looking into ECA as well. There you go. I think out of those three, I think Zen and ECA are the ones that I would be buying at these levels. I think Linda may have, find some <laughs> pressure here in the near future. Hodling ETC till the moon. I mean, when, this is going to be... Wind, moon. I mean, I already told you my prediction on that. When that thing goes to Coinbase, if we are starting a new bull run, like every, the whole market's firming up and that gets in on Coinbase, that thing's going to be a triple-digit coin, no problem. Uh, immediately. Immediately. $100, no problem. I think you should name your child Wen Moon. Wen Moon. W-E-N. Wen Moon Lambo Hellman. <laughs> That's what I would do. All right, guys, do you have any charts you want and Todd to the, look at real quick? And I'll quick? be the Todd father. <laughs> any charts you want Todd to look at real uh, quick or any questions for me? I got to get out of here and get to my birthday dinner with the family. They're already starting to call me right now. Appreciate you guys tuning in early today. Don't forget to smash that like button. And also, thanks for all the happy birthday wishes. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. I, I have nothing. Bitcoin's firming up a little bit, so we will be here, I guess, tomorrow night. If you need anything from me, hit me up on Twitter or email. Yeah, we're available on Twitter as well. Jack says, man, I really wish I wasn't a broke student. I'd be investing way more in ETC. Hey, I don't know if you have a gaming computer, but you can mine ETC as well. And hey, Jack, just keep dollar cost averaging into these markets, and I think you'll be pretty happy here in the long term. QJ, I mentioned made. I mean, it's, it's short term. That's a, uh, on the short term chart, they have been uh, coming back out of here. I mean, that's a, uh, looks as good a, as a lot of these coins. So I think that one's still okay here. So uh, I'm guessing you probably bought it right around this area or looking to buy it. Get a student loan for more crypto. Right, because they're going to start, they're going to start uh, well, taking your student loan and letting you just throw it away, forgiving them. So I might as well take a student loan out and buy some crypto. That's what I would do. Only disclaimer we're running is this, do your own research. This is only for entertainment purposes only. That is it. All Tony, right, guys. Tony M says, remember, ladies and gents, green days are when you make money. Red days are when you earn it. There you <laughs> go. You just got to work a little harder. Make sure your research is done a little better. Get into those projects you love. Keep accumulating them because this place is going to go to the moon. We got the rocket ship. We're ready over there. You are ready because you are subscribed to this channel. Until next time, we will see you later. And stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto. What up, Seb? Hey, hey, stay positive, pal. Most people, when they lose, they whine and quit. But you got to be there for the turns. Everybody's got good luck, everybody's got bad luck. 
Don't run when you lose. Play hard, play clean, be careful out there. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. <laughs>